The Democratic brand has been tarnished. DNC chair says party needs to battle the damage that has been done to it by movements like defund the police to win over rural voters. Good luck. I will say that, you know, there's going to be some elections coming up the next few years. I wonder if some of these conservative or moderate Democrats will be able to actually win ever again. There are many swing districts where I just think they're going to go red. I could be wrong. There are a lot of people that love cheering on the establishment and the status quo, but there are two divergent realities right now. And there are vice, there, there's virtue signaling as, and as Julie Borowski told us on the IRL podcast last Friday, vice signaling, like virtue signaling is the people who post on Twitter when they're saying things like, look how not racist we are. And then vice signaling is people like rip their masks off and like, I don't need no mask. Like I'm not going to follow the rules. Two divergent realities. It's an easy way to put it. And we're wondering who is going to become the dominant reality. I have to be honest. I think those of us uh, here, the moderate position, many conservatives, liberals who are no longer in, you know, watching establishment media, more uh, watching more independent media, outgroup, to say the least. The establishment is the establishment, will be the establishment. But the Democratic brand is hurting. And it's hurting a lot because of people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. It is the progressive far leftists that push things that don't make sense, like defund the police. I am not the, the biggest fan of uh, the unaccountability we see with police departments. I believe there should be reform. I believe things should change. But it's not just about defunding the police. It's about very special things like this. We're going to we're going to get into how AOC has absolutely ripped the Democratic brand to shreds. And she was supposed to be its saving grace, to be fair. Look, Nancy Pelosi is awful. And I defended her in the past. That was probably a mistake. Schumer is awful. I get it. He's working towards legalization of pot, which I can respect. So you you give the credit where credit is due. But for the most part, they're all pretty much awful, right? AOC was supposed to come in and be something better. She's not. She has recently come out in support of concentration camps for kids. I know, I know. A lot of people are saying, Tim, you're being hyperbolic. She didn't actually say that. But let's play a game of walk the path. Let's, Let's go through the logic here. You may recall this story. From June 18th, 2019, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, quote, the U.S. is running concentration camps on our border. Wow, that is a strong statement to make, at the very least. But she did. And she claimed that it wasn't actually just opinion. She tweeted, this administration has established concentration camps on the southern border of the United States for immigrants, where they are being brutalized with dehumanizing conditions and dying. This is not hyperbole. It is the conclusion of expert analysis. Donald Trump's administration did not establish camps on the border. In fact, he inherited them from most of them, as my understanding, from Barack Obama. In fact, when the left kept trying to criticize Trump, they actually accidentally kept sharing photos from the Obama administration and then saying it was Trump's fault. You see, these people don't care about telling you the truth and and breaking down what's really going on. And, And to be fair, to Ocasio-Cortez. She has criticized the Biden administration and Democrats. She says both parties are to blame for what's going on. And I think that's actually a fair assessment. It's not like the Democrats are the ones coming out twirling their mustaches only. The Republicans are, 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 you know, pushing policies as well that result in things people don't like. However, a couple months ago, AOC tweeted, an immediate improvement would be required, would be to require influx facilities with children to be licensed. Oh, I love it. Here we go. Another issue is whether these services should be contracted out the way they are currently uh, to begin with and whether facilities with controversial records, e.g. Homestead, should be reopened. Whoa, 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 whoa. Influx facilities with children? Facilities with controversial records? You mean to tell me that AOC is saying, okay, and this is this was a couple months ago, that she is in favor of these facilities so long as the government licenses them, licenses them. OK, wait, wait, hold, hold on. There are concentration camps on the border. Things have not changed. In fact, they've gotten worse. We have photos coming out from Project Veritas showing kids sleeping under a bridge in the dirt with a mylar blanket. It's like foil. It's like a, it's like thin. And she's like influx facility. She is referring to the homestead facility, which she once called a concentration camp. She's referring to it as a facility with controversial records. Ah, (laughs) that's right. We all know about how the United States set up facilities with controversial records for Japanese citizens during World War II. 
Yeah, uh-huh. Are, are, you, are, you, are, are you kidding me? You want to know why the, de- the why the Democratic brand is tarnished? It's this trash and the people who blindly march behind it. AOC is not a, 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 a champion of progressive values. She's just saying whatever she has to say at the at the time to gain lowest common denominator support. My friends, this is called <clears throat> a grift, a grift. I love it. When they, when they accuse me or other people of grifting, my positions have remained mostly the same. I've changed in a few things, you know, and, and that's normal. Like people's opinions change, right? So uh, I used to be fairly like meh on 2A and now I'm like 2A, blah, Second Amendment, guns, all that stuff. That opinion changed because it's more about individual freedoms and, and, and uh, personal liberties and things, uh, you know, civil rights, etc. The right of the individual to have certain, you know, well, the individuals have rights. So I've definitely moved closer towards libertarianism, little L, not big L. AOC is moving closer to authoritarianism. She's becoming more and more pro-establishment. So let me, let me tell you, what do you think happens when you're a Democrat and you, you mildly pay attention and you see AOC being like, these are concentration camps. You see that and you're like, man, these, these facilities are bad. Like, we better do something about this. And now it's like two years later and you're like, so whatever happened with any of those camps? Influx facilities. Uh huh. <laughs> Seriously, look, there are a lot of people who are tribalists. They will support AOC no matter what. They don't care about this. They don't care that she's lying and spitting in their face. They just want to see Republicans suffer. They want to see themselves win. Now, don't get me wrong. They're absolutely conservatives, and Republicans who want the exact same thing. Many of them, I would say, a lot of them would watch my channel when I was, you know, during the election and after. Not so much. There are a lot of, it's not everybody. I know a lot of Trump supporters, you know, obviously do watch, but there's a lot of people who just want to want to have that tribalistic victory over the other instead of having real conversations about what we need to do to solve our problems. So how, let me say this, how is the democratic brand supposed to have any real value to it when there's nothing to value? Okay. As a Democrat, do I support AOC criticizing these camps? Or do I, uh, now when she's flip-flop, do I say, oh, you know what? Now that I think about it, it's actually not that bad. Do I just change my opinion on a, on the fly? Look, there may be many people with cognitive dissonance where their brain simultaneously holds two contradicting views. Donald Trump ran concentration camps, but Biden runs immigration facilities. But there are a lot of people who have to be sitting there with a headache being like, oh, how do I support this? It's amazing to me because for all of the awful things Donald Trump said and did and all of the lies, he was consistent on what he wanted to do. He lied about dumb things, you know, about everyone loves him and all the women. And he's like, it was it was always about like how great he was. But then he would just come out and be like, we're selling weapons to Saudi Arabia. It's a great deal. It's like, OK, like, well, all right. at least he's honest in that capacity. I don't care what he calls himself. This man's got a golden toilet. Certainly has a high opinion of himself. The Democrats don't represent anything. If the opinions bounce around and flip flop and AOC, who's supposed to be a progressive champion, challenging the establishment is, in fact, propping them up with cash. I love this so much. You know, do me a favor. If you know people who, uh, well, look, I have my bias for sure. And there's gonna be a lot of people who don't want to hear this. Because they love AOC and she's she's fighting the, the you know the, the Trumpism and the fascism and all that stuff whatever. Well, if some you, show them this. In fact, don't just don't just show them this video. I mean, you could share this video if you want if you want to support my work. But maybe I'm too anti AOC for some of these people. They want to dip their toes in the water and figure out who this woman is. Maybe you just send her an article like this from Politico. Vulnerable Democrats fret after getting a shock. AOC's campaign cash. Wait, 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 what? You mean to tell me that AOC is acting like a funnel for the progressive left to suck in donations and then run them off to establishment moderate Democrats in swing districts? Yes. And I'm sure she'll justify it by saying we need to maintain the majority. And here we go, baby. From a progressive champion of the Justice Democrats challenging the machine and saying to Democrats, we are coming for you and we will primary you to saying we must protect the moderate establishment Democrat. Wasn't it AOC uh, who came out in just a couple months ago and said, 
all of the Democrats who ran on progressive values won in their districts, in swing districts. So why is she giving money to these vulnerable Democrats who are certainly not? That's amazing. So you want to tell me, once again, DNC chair, what's damaging your brand? I get it. He says defund the police. The Democrats brand has been absolutely tarnished for some time. Check out the story. They say, as the midterm campaign campaign's first fundraising deadline approached this week, several vulnerable House Democrats got an unwelcome surprise in their accounts. Five thousand dollars from from AOC. The New York Democrat sent the contributions to her colleagues to help keep the House majority ahead of a tough cycle without directly contributing to the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, with which she's publicly clashed. But Ocasio-Cortez's largesse and an oversight at the, at the campaign headquarters has instead raised awkward questions among her colleagues as some swing district Democrats fret over whether to return her money before the GOP can turn it into an attack ad. Woo! Too late, baby. This is the lady that has flipped her opinion and now supports concentration camps, apparently. Unless her opinion on what Donald Trump was doing has changed now that Joe Biden is president, maybe. And now they know the money she gives out is tainted. This is incredible. AOC may as well be working for the Republicans. Let me just repeat this. Democrats are scared and want to give money back to AOC because she is polluting the Democrats brand. You get this? The Democrats know there is a toxicity in the Democratic Party, and it is people like Ocasio-Cortez. Um, I can just see it now. There's going to be some swing district Democrat and they're going to be like, you know, this wild far left Democrat just received $5,000 from AOC circumventing the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. So it's like unapproved, essentially, not party approved. Now, look, AOC can give money to whoever she wants, but isn't it hilarious how they're scared and want to give the money back? It's too late. It's too late. Now, giving the money back could be a good thing. They could then push back and say, no, no, we gave that money back. But it tarnishes what Democrats represent. And at this point, I don't know what they represent other than AOC, like supporting concentration camps. So long as the government licenses them. Don't forget. Politico says some members who campaign, whose campaigns got unexpected Ocasio-Cortez cash are seeking answers directly from DCC chair rep Sean Patrick Maloney and top staffers. Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee aides gave lawmakers wire transfer information to AOC's aides without the approval of more senior officials, according to multiple people familiar with the contributions. Even if imperiled House Democrats refund her contribution now, Ocasio-Cortez's name is almost certain to show up on their Federal Election Commission reports when they're due this month, creating a liability for members of her party who have to who have to win re-election in districts where her political brand is poisoned thanks to years of unrelenting Republican attacks. Oh, yikes, man, that is spicy. They know it. They, they, the AOC's donations, her name is poison. Poison. <laughs> While some are grateful for the infusion of cash, at least three Democrats have so far either declined the initial transfer or said they would return the money. Reps Connor Lamb of Pennsylvania, Carolyn Bordeaux of Georgia, and Alyssa Slotkin of Michigan, according to multiple sources. Several people involved with the episode described it as an, un, uh, as an unforced error by the DCCC, with the staff of its campaign arm failing to anticipate the political ramifications of putting their party's most polarizing figure on their donor rolls of vulnerable members known as frontliners. Is AOC trying to help Republicans win? Certainly she knows that in a moderate district, her name is mud. Um, it's incredible. Maybe she's trying to sabotage moderate Dems so that next time around 2024, progressive far leftist Dems will run in their place and say, see, the moderate agenda didn't work. We need to go far left. I don't think that she's thinking that far ahead. But going behind the back of the DCCC, I can't say that AOC is trying to help the Democrats, although that's what it seems like. You know, look, make the, make the least amount of assumptions. What's, what solution tends to be the simplest one? Chris Hayden, a spokesman for the DCCC, declined to comment on the details, but said, we appreciate Rep Ocasio-Cortez's ongoing commitment to a Democratic majority. Due to a miscommunication, some wire transfers were made in error, but that has been addressed. Ah, too late. 
Politico says normally swing district Democrats are scrounging for every last dollar to help them secure their reelections, particularly in a first quarter that has been tougher than usual for candidates across the board. But the Ocasio-Cortez donation, these Democrats said, was unsolicited and came without warning. I love this. They're like, no, 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 we don't we don't want our money. We didn't ask for it, please. They say uh, many of the campaigns did not receive a heads up from the DCCC about the donation until after it hit members accounts, a move that surprised senior aides and campaign consultants. I mean, think about how dirty politics is. You could create a super PAC called like the Defending Ocasio-Cortez and Progressive Values Super PAC and then make donations to moderates and then Republicans would use that as an attack. You know what I mean? And it would work because regular people who don't like AOC would be like, whoa, what's this? That's why they're freaking out. In this instance, AOC actually did it herself. Quote, the GOP has spent four years saying the frontliners are all socialists. Now they've got the receipts to prove it. Anyone telling themselves this won't be in campaign ads is in denial, said one Democratic consultant who works for swing seat members. This is insane. This is crazy. In the political donation world, wire transfers are commonly used to quickly move large sums of money from one account to another, particularly in a final stretch of a fundraising quarter and during a pandemic. The Ocasio-Cortez transfers carried clear political risk for some members. I just have to stop right here and stress this again. My friends, listen to what they're reporting. The Democratic establishment is panicking because Ocasio-Cortez, an elected Democrat, is donating money to help Democrats win, and they're worried it will backfire, and it already has very likely. Wow. Talk about Democrats being tainted by AOC and the squad. Remarkable stuff. Clear political risks. Say some sources pointed out that she could have alleviated the current anxiety by giving to the DCCC directly. That's what I don't get. Now, apparently there was some issue with Ocasio-Cortez and the, and, the, and the DCCC or Democratic establishment players because they didn't want progressive uh, super PACs or organizations working with, you know, like working to unseat Democratic uh, 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 people running politicians in certain districts where there were moderates, AOC pledged to actually prop up people to run against them. So naturally, you had the DCCC and other Democratic establishment uh, individuals saying, we are not you know, going to support this or allow you to do this. We're not going to. It, it was something like they wouldn't contract with any of these organizations that would support the Justice Democrats or whatever. So perhaps what AOC is doing right now is sabotaging the moderates. 100%. Make sure they lose now and then clean up the pieces later. Destroy, rebuild, infiltrate, destroy, rebuild. Is that how it goes? AOC Brunson is a Democrat. She says crazy things about concentration camps and then supporting them. She then knows her brand is tainted, gives money, saying outrageous things. It's almost like she's trying to tear it down. So, hey, you know, more power to AOC, I suppose. And I guess they think that once the moderate Democrats are, are crushed, and the Republicans win the majority, they can then come back, come back out and counter with a further left message saying, see, the moderates didn't work. They say, still, other Democrats sa said they saw the Ocasio-Cortez's interest in helping endangered incumbents as a positive sign for party unity, even if they were stunned by the method. And privately, the liberal star already is personally close with some of the frontliners, many of whom were elected in the same blue wave that helped Democrats recapture the House in 2018. Could it be that the reason AOC did this is she's trying to take the party over? I know, hold on. I know I just said infiltrate, destroy, rebuild. No, what I mean is maybe she's trying to get these moderates to look at her. She wants everyone to know her name. She's a master at marketing. Don't believe me? Just look at her Twitter account. How many millions of followers does she have now? And she keeps growing. She knows how to play the game. That's why she says Trump is running concentration camps. And all the leftists pump their retweets out and she gains tons of followers. Then she comes out and it's Biden and she goes, well, Biden could be doing better with his influx facilities. She is a manipulator. She is like Trump 50 years ago, all right? Well, yeah, about 50 years ago. Trump knew how to play the game, and he used marketing to his advantage, putting big old golden Trump signs up on top of buildings, and it made him wealthy. AOC knows how to play the game as well. She knows what to say, where to say it, how to say it, and she knows she can get away with it, and she does. Now, you or I, we may be saying we see through the tactic, we see through the manipulation or sheer ignorance. Unfortunately, it's just... It's not it's not enough. I hate to say it, man, but there are a lot of conservative channels that I respect and I enjoy watching. I disagree with, you know, uh, Stephen Crowder, for instance, he's been getting just absolutely battered by YouTube for totally BS reasons. 
I absolutely disagree with Crowder, but you, on a lot of, on a lot of things, though I've definitely come around on like guns and stuff. So, but Crowder was always willing to have a conversation with me, even when I was like, I think we should tax the rich or whatever. You know, talking about certain progressive policies, because when it comes to the conservatives, the prominent ones right now love the debate, and so do I. And I know I'm not always right, and sometimes my opinions change, particularly with like respect to the Second Amendment. I had a really, uh, really amazing argument with Jack Murphy on the Timcast IRL podcast. You should definitely check it out just from this past week, uh, last Wednesday, where I talked about stopping billionaires from flooding the zone with billions of dollars to ban guns. And beyond that, just other rights being curtailed. So I see, you know, Steyer, Bloomberg, Bezos, Soros, and the Koch brothers and the Mercers, they all flood districts where they don't live with money in order to influence what they want. I don't like that because if you live in West Virginia, and then some dude dumps $100 million into your state so that they can get a Democrat in who's going to put, you know, agree with some gun control and say every reasonable person agrees and just erode your rights. That is not the will of the people. That's manipulation of the people. So I look at what, what Ocasio-Cortez represents, and she represents the biggest problem. Now, just to finish off that last point, you know, Jack disagreed. He said people should be allowed to spend their money. And I'm like, I understand it's complicated, right? With AOC and this donation stuff, she gets propped up by people all outside her district. And then she used that money to influence her district. She knows what she is doing with marketing. So I have to wonder, what is she doing here? Could be very simple. All this money from Seattle and Austin and and LA and Chicago going to AOC and her organizations. She then gives it to Democrats in vulnerable moderate districts with her name on it. And then everyone gets to know her name. She is bypassing the DCCC. She is taking the branding away. It is brilliant. She knows what she is doing. And she knows she can say whatever she wants and get away with it. So I'll tell you this. DNC chair Jamie, uh, Jamie Harrison, he made these remarks on Sunday. Too bad, buddy. Too bad. You guys can't compete with the, with the, sheer, the sheer raw power that is Ocasio-Cortez. And I'll say this. Ocasio-Cortez is a great politician. Great politician. You may, not, you may not like her policies. You may think she's evil, but to deny her ability would be incorrect. Only a fool would think she wasn't capable. She knows exactly what she's doing. She knows how to play the game. She knows what to say. She knows what she can get away with. It takes more than just luck to accomplish this. She was born for the political arts. It's, a, it's remarkable. It's absolutely remarkable. She is just absolutely crushing it. I don't like her. I don't like politicians. And she epitomizes everything about them. Trump in many ways did too. But Trump was such an arrogant know-it-all that like he didn't flip flop all that much. He'd be like, no, I'm doing it no matter what. I'll burn the whole place down if I have to. Figuratively, I don't mean literally. He literally was like, fire him, fire him. He should have fired more people. He like people were resigning left and right. Trump knew what he wanted. AOC is, is, is the perfect politician. She'll say what she needs to say. She will destroy the brand of the DNC. And then she'll, from the ashes, build anew. With respect, man, respect. You got to respect that hustle, man. That's real talent. I think AOC is, what's the right way to put it? I think she's smart and talented, but I don't know. Her ability to manipulate on social media and steal the conversation is almost unparalleled. There are very few people who know how to do what she's doing, but I'm not, I don't think she's the smartest person in the world. I just think she has no morals. She has no principles. And so while you might be like, no, she's not smart. Look at that dumb thing she supports. Does she really support it? Or is she just manipulating you? Right? Here I am talking about her again for like the third time. And a lot of people are like, stop talking about her. You're giving her power, blah, blah, blah. Look, man, I'm not I'm not here to care about who gains or doesn't gain power from me talking about them. Like Trump may have gained power from me talking about him. AOC may from me talking about her. But this is my opinion watching her do what she does. It's brilliant stuff. It is. She, look, I think the concentration camp stuff proves she doesn't have any morals. She just needs to say what needs to be said to gain power from stupid people. And it works. So I wonder, people might call her dumb. She would be wrong. She, look, if she was stupid, she'd still be tweeting these are concentration camps. The fact that she changed her opinion means she understands how the system works and she's adapting. It's brilliant. And she will burn the DNC to the ground. And you know what? Hey, I'll tell you this. Maybe the DNC deserves to be figuratively burned to the ground. Like just all the moderate establishment types are going to lose out because they're weak. 
corporatist and they don't do anything. And then we'll get crazy AOC. And who knows what she actually stands for? Should be fun. I'll leave it there. We'll see how the DNC's brand survives, uh, how, how it holds up in the next uh, uh, upcoming election. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.